Good morning, everyone. How are things at your end? You can see the screen. You can see my video. Can you hear my audio? Everything fine? Very good morning. We'll just wait for a couple of minutes and then we'll start our discussion. So after this, we'll have metallurgy, DNF and coordination. I think that there are a set of students who have attended coordination, right? What about DNF? Means you people can are free to hear. Okay. What about DNF? That was done or not? Okay. Okay. Okay, for some set of people, only in metallurgy is the last chapter. For some others who like maybe you have joined late, um, I have to do DNF as well as coordination. Got it. Should we start our discussion? It's 11.45 so that we can complete metallurgy. Okay. Since it's 11.46 and I can officially start. Students, metallurgy. In metallurgy, what happens is minerals which occur in the natural, in the normal form, natural form. There are sub certain substances, elements, which are highly reactive. They'll be present in the form of their oxides or carbonates or hydroxides or chlorides, etc., etc. From them, say Al2O3.2H2O or AgCl or PBS, from them, if I want to effectively, as well as economically, extract metals like lead or iron or silver or copper, basically everything. All the ones which we need. Silver, gold, ex platinum, etc. Platinum is basically present in the native form only because it's quite less reactive. So if you want to get silver and gold for your ornaments or um, silver foil is also sweets, no? Or you need copper, aluminum, etc. for this electrical equipments, utensils, etc, etc. How to obtain those metals in their pure form and that also economically is the purpose of our discussion of this metallurgy chapter. So basically, it's a branch of chemistry which deals with the extraction of metals from their ores. So now, say for example, you have hematite. Fe2O3, which is an ore of iron. Using suitable techniques, which we are going to learn your students, we can get not only cast iron, pig iron, cast iron, wrought iron, everything we are going to learn. So the metal can be successfully obtained or isolated at a cheap cost. Students, have you heard of iron and steel industries? That's what they do. First, they'll manufacture or like they'll or they'll separate Fe2O3 or they'll treat Fe2O3 in a way we can get Fe and they'll mix Fe with some amounts of manganese or chromium or some percentage of carbon also to prepare stainless steel which is rust free. Yes. As students, I have been brought up in the environment where my father used to work in iron and steel industry. So I have seen, gone there for tours, literally seen and always seen from outside plus seen from inside also. 
hectic work students yes so this is, this chapter is always close to the heart for those reasons so naturally occurring chemical substances which are present in the earth's crust and you can obtain it from by mining you can mine and obtain those naturally occurring substances minerals but there are only certain minerals from which the metal can be extracted economically which means at a commercial level and that's known as ore which means all ores are minerals but all minerals are not <laughs> very good very good all ores are minerals so all ores are definitely minerals but all minerals cannot be used to successfully economically or commercially extract metals from them so all ores are minerals but all minerals are not ores this is the definition of of course minerals which are naturally occurring chemical substances which are present on the earth's crust but and we obtained by mining so the quarries how they mine you go to those mining areas in chota nagpur plateau jharkhand dhanbad side can see these many others according to my knowledge that ore contains metal compounds as undesired impurities which can be called as gang or matrix so the, along with the essential thing the non essential thing is clinging along with it so separation of those impurities is our concern in this chapter right so the undesired impurities are known as gang or matrix one thing i would like to tell you if you listen to these things properly in case you have not prepared so well with this animations and all the stuffs written and beautifully devised here and if you listen to me we can complete most of the chapter today you know you have we have two sessions now let's continue so undesired impurities can call be gang or matrix so our job is to separate the gang or matrix from the metal and that's what metallurgy is all about the metals which are present in the elemental form they are known as the native ores generally the less reactive ones will be called as native ores the more reactive ones will always be present in the combined state students we'll have a list of ores which will be flashing one after the other but i would like to hear from you here or from the chats whatever ore you know say an oxide ore i'm seeing the chats in case i don't hear anything bauxite al2o3.2h2 hematite bauxite done carbonate ore magnetite also oxide ore okay agreed fe3o4 fine now carbonate ore we don't have much time so one or two examples only we can okay dolomite mgco3. caco3 siderite calamine limestone very good sulfide ores now gypsum okay cinnabar iron pyrites galena hmm galena also very good zinc blend have to agree so let's continue then or in which the element is present in the native form or the elemental form they are known as the native ores definitely i'm talking about the less reactive metals like silver gold platinum though silver many of the times is present in the combined state also so silver is present 
in the native state as well as in the combined state. Gold and platinum mostly they are native metals. Okay. What is this element? Or precious, precious things we are talking about. Students, yesterday we read about a reagent which can dissolve normal metals like gold and platinum. What is it? Done. Okay. Very good. Yes. You don't have to take so much of pains of typing also. And I'm not here to judge, sit and find out what mistakes you're doing. Trying to help you learn more things in a systematic way. That's it. Yes. So or in which the metal is present in the combined form. That's in the form of a compound. Fine. Um, light. So the. Can you see the slide clearly? Any difficulty? Okay. Light and all is not proper. You just let me know. I'll just give a just give me a minute. I'll call give a call to sir. I find it little dim or dull. Give me a second. So till then. Halidors. Halidors example. It's fine, it's okay. Mm, one second. Rock salt. No difficulty. Okay, fine. Then there's no point in wasting more time on the settings and all. Fine. Horn silver, AGCL. Rock salt and ACL. Wow. That is true. Now, let's see the list. Let's see if you are missing out something. Bauxite, hematite, magnetite, cassiterite. Used in the extraction of tin. Zincite, zeno. Zincite, zeno. Cassiterite, SNO2. Magnetite. Hematite. Fine. See if certain things you don't remember. Let it get registered. Sorry. <laughs> get it get registered immediately. Boxite, hematite, magnetite, I got. Zincite, ZNO, cassiterite or tin stone. Tin stone, it's easy to remember SNO2. Cassiterite, remember this. Let's continue further. Cinnabar and Galena, zinc blend, all the three you people said. So, cassiterite or tin stone, an extra one, what we were not discussing here. SNO2, zincite, ZNO. So, sulfide is also done. Horn silver, cryolite is Na3ALF6, plutes, parocea, F2. Sylvine, yesterday we saw in some discussion. Sylvine is a or sylvite also, sylvine, I basically call it. Anyways, you should know both. KCL. Rock salt, NaCl should be there. Dolomite, MgCO3, dot CaCO3. Siderite, calamine. Serucite, serucite. PbCO3, serucite. Azurite and malachite green. Students, I'll tell you. What technique I adopt, you know. Sometimes you must have heard the uh, the Statue of Liberty, which is made up of copper, slowly turning green. What happens is the copper gets copper gets oxidized to cuprous or cupric oxide, then gets converted into its carbonate and hydroxide. So CuCO3 dot. CuOH hold twice. CuCO3 dot CuOH hold twice is known as malachite green. CuCO3 dot CuOH hold twice. Malachite green. Add one more copper carbonate. So two copper carbonate, one copper hydroxide. No, you're supposed to know this for your need. It's better. You have to pr get prepared with these. So two copper carbonate and one copper hydroxide as you write. Serucite PBCO3. Chalo, I'll ask you a little. After this, chalo, let's try it. Mm, Cassiterite. 
unmute unmute did you think i scold or something or very scary okay cassiterite sno2 cerucite it's easy to open the mouth and type so much cerucite lead carbonate perfect malachite green copper carbonate dot copper hydroxide and in as you write you'll have two copper carbonate dot copper hydroxide done others we knew sylvine or sylvite kcl Okay. Very good. The purpose is these are fact based things we have to admit, right? Let it get registered in your mind in the class itself. Chalo, tell me. A B C D. You can just type. Absolutely. Because this is zero and CO three. You just know, so no. Everyone clear? And not only when when you practice at home, no one small suggestion from my end uh, because I'm your elder, I'm your senior. Whenever you get a question, if it's given, which is a sulfide ore, rather than just concentrating on your answer, if you learn the formulas of the other ones, your job is done. You learn this. You learn not one thing from this question. You learn four things. My suggestion: try to follow. Cinnabar is sulfide. Sulfide ore. Absolutely. Absolutely. Limonite is a mixture of ferrous oxide as well as hydroxide. General formula and all. Even I don't remember it pinpoint honestly, but it's basically a mixture of ferrous oxide and ferrous hydroxide. Siderite. magnetite malachite this is the way you should practice the correct answer is 2 the first two are having fe in plus 2 state here what is fe3o4 it's a mixed oxide which is consisting of a mixture of feo plus fe2o3 where feo is In the plus two state, but in FeO, Fe two O three, F is in the plus three state. Plus three state, true. So you cannot consider this. Only the first two can be considered. And malachite is a ore of copper. All the ores almost will be done. Correct? No. Yes. After those, can we continue? Good enough. Idea? Have you got? Okay, I got. I got my thumbs up. Everyone can interact like this. Or open your mouth also. Pyrometallurgy. When we heat something and we get a desired metal, pyrometallurgy. Use electrolysis. Use of electrodes. Electrolysis process where electrical energy is used is supplied and that brings about a chemical reaction. Electrometallurgy. Hydrometallurgy will carry out certain reactions in the aqueous medium, and we get some metals like gold and silver. Pyrometallurgy. We'll use furnaces for that. You need high temperature. I've seen pyro pyrometallurgy happening. I told no iron and steel plant. My father. I've seen. It's such huge has furnace. It involves high temperature processes. Pyro It comes from the word heat. So everything you link some story or something so that you can correlate it better. Not only for this. Try this. It will work. It involves high temperature processes where. Chemical reactions will take place in furnaces, very high temperature, and I have seen Fe extraction. Exam wise, also more important. That's the reason I'm stressing in NEET. Otherwise, tin, lead, copper, iron, zinc, everything can be extracted by pyrometallurgy. This 
is more relevant from the examination viewpoint also. Yes. Students are used, uh, I, I don't remember because it's, I'm too old now. They used to wear certain kind of glasses also so that this kind of like uh, things, particles just, just don't enter your eyes. Okay. Low reactive or less reactive metals, silver or gold, etc., can be extracted here. How? We will see. Just a basic idea. Using heat and furnaces, metals like what? Uh, copper and zinc and iron. Iron, I forgot. Iron can be extracted. Gold, silver, hydrometallurgy. Electrometallurgy. Aluminium, calcium, and mostly highly reactive are written. Aluminium, calcium, magnesium, sodium, the S block elements, and aluminium can be. They're very reactive, no? So to supply something very powerful to separate them, like that you'll remember. Something which takes place in aqua solution is quite casual. So less reactive copper or what gold, silver mainly. Highly reactive S block elements and aluminium. It is electro and pyro. We use a lot of heat. Think of blast furnaces, think of copper, think of iron. And what is metals above and below hydrogen? Students, there is a reactivity series. Okay, there's a reactivity series. And what is the basis of that reactivity series? You know, the suppose I have like lithium here. It's much more reactive than any other metal. So lithium can, lithium is the strongest oxidizing, I'm sorry, lithium is the strongest reducing agent in aqua solution. If it's the strongest reducing agent in aqua solution, it can get oxidized very easily. So it can lose its electron and form Li plus hydrated aqua space very easily. On the basis of their ability to lose their valence electron, the ability to get oxidized, we categorize them into some form. If lithium has more tendency to get oxidized, is a strong, basically the most tendency to get oxidized is the strongest reducing agent in aqueous medium, not in gaseous phase, aqueous medium. Now, if I compare it with something like Fe or zinc or something, zinc will also lose its two electrons and form Zn2 plus because it's more stable in not plus one plus, but plus two form. But this ability of zinc to lose its electron or its reduction potential. Sorry, I should use the term oxidation potential. Its oxidation potential is less than that of lithium. Or in very simple terms, wait, let me make it simple. Lithium can lose its only valence electron and form Li plus aqueous quite easily. Zinc, at the same time, can lose its valence electrons and form Zn2 plus not that easily. So on the basis of that, there's a reactivity series. And if you are thinking that hydrogen is a non-metal and still included in that series of metals, it's because of its unique behavior because of which you read a separate chapter in your textbook, uh, like in your syllabus in 11th standard. Let me tell you, it has a lot of resemblances with alkali metals because just like alkali metals, it can also lose its only valence electron. but it was found out that it is more reactive than copper, silver, gold, platinum on the basis of its ability to lose its valence electron. Yes, SRP, standard reduction potential. And by convention, if something is getting oxidized also, things are explained in terms of standard reduction potential, courtesy chapter electrochemistry. Yes, standard hydrogen electrode. Yes, that, that's a reference point where the E naught of that system is considered 0, 0.0 volt. Fine. Now next. So the reactivity series is based on, the, because we are talking about metals, the ability of the metals to lose its valence electrons. How eagerly it is 
trying to get rid of its valence electron. Lithium tries to get rid of it the easiest because Li plus aqueous is highly stabilized by hydration. Hydration energy released is really very high. So on the basis of that, metals are arranged. Similarly, non-metals. Non-metals have to complete their oxide by gaining electrons. And the ability of these non-metals to gain that electron, like F minus, I'm sorry, F, not F minus, F2, will have the highest tendency to gain electrons and form stable F minus ion. So non-metals, how eagerly it is waiting to accept electron, greater will be its standard reduction potential. <laughs> how easily lithium is ready to lose its valence electron? That much high will be its oxidation potential. If oxidation potential is more, reduction potential will be less. Could give only a basic idea because of time. So ma'am, the metals which can disperse hydrogen on reaction with acid, if displacement reaction is being carried out, if it is displacement reaction which is being carried out, say for example, um, copper with H2SO4 dilute. Since copper is below hydrogen in the reactivity series, this displacement reaction cannot be carried out. Copper is below, just two minutes others, hydrogen in the reactivity series. So, copper cannot come and overpower and displace hydrogen. Zinc I am above hydrogen in the reactivity series. So if you put dilute HCl and zinc granules to it, displacement will occur. Hydrogen will be liberated. So what is happening here? Displacement. But copper can react with concentrated H2SO4 because when it is reacting with concentrated H2SO4, only displacement is not allowed. Reactivity series, displacement, deciding factor. When it reacts with concentrated H2SO4, it's acting as an oxidizing agent. So this is oxidizing agent, this is acting as a reducing agent. And they are participating in yesterday's discussion actually. Redox reaction. So when Copper reacts with concentrated H2SO4 in spite of the fact that copper is below hydrogen in the reactivity series. It is right now not undergoing any displacement. It, it has to kick out hydrogen and all. It is undergoing a redox reaction where it is where H2SO4 is oxidizing copper from 0 to plus 2 state and itself getting reduced to plus 4 state. Yes, Faizan. Yes, yes, yes. So, if it's a redox reaction, tick. If it's a displacement reaction, cross. Similarly, zinc with concentrated H2SO4. Tick because, by the way, dilute also tick. Displacement, different products. Redox. SO2, no, it should be. Uh, definitely. Here also, more than putting the tick, putting H2O is more important. Balance it, not required. Everyone got it? Zinc with concentrated H2O for redox. Copper with concentrated H2O for redox because concentrated H2O for is a strong. I can't, sorry. I'm extremely sorry. Hmm. Is an oxidizing agent. Give me a minute.
thank you for your patience so concentrated hso4 is an oxidizing agent why did i erase strong one you know can anyone tell me why did i erase a strong one concentrated hno3 is a strong oxidizing agent basically comparatively because i can't call it a very strong one because s plus 6 is basically getting converted into into s plus 4 so it's you remember last class discussion yesterday i just call it that's the reason a mild oxidizing agent but again it's an oxidizing agent so these two are redox reactions this is a displacement and that is also not possible with copper because copper is below hydrogen in the reactivity series everyone got it any confusion anything if yes please let me know so yes even here whatever since you know uh, and you have studied electrochemistry well you must be knowing that if there are two positively charged ions and you know when they move towards the cathode only one will be preferentially discharged tell me at cathode which one will be discharged the one which has higher reduction potential or lower reduction potential i have two positively charged ions suppose chal i'll give an example also na plus and h plus both reach cathode because they are positively charged and cathode means the negative terminal of the battery cathode means the negative terminal of the battery so both got ready ran towards cathode they are positively charged exactly the one which has higher reduction potential gets preferentially discharged so i have minus 2.7 volt volt you know this is 0.0 volt standard yes yes fazani yes others vedeshri and natasha nandana sorry nandana everyone yes so it's i win the one which has higher reduction potential so don't just give me a minute i'll tell you i'll tell you some okay thank you so much for your patience actually i let me tell you what is the reason i don't pick up calls in the class uh, my son has so much of cold cough etc he had exams annual exams today we couldn't send him so i have asked my husband to go and tell this to the school and all so for that reason i was getting some call what and medical certificate and all we had to give or not so i i hope you excuse me 
yes for this few minutes and we'll continue okay so in cathode who wins who wins thank you so much by the history um h plus means the one which will have a higher reduction potential the that one will win in cathode hydro reduction potential now in anode can you tell me in anode what happens oxidation takes place oxidation takes place in anode fine now i didn't i didn't give any examples here which one will be discharged or not so chlorine and all you cannot say i have not given any i have not asked which one or out of which one so just i would like to say that oxidation takes place at anode so the one which will have higher oxidation potential okay so oxidation takes place at anode the one which has higher oxidation potential or correct no oxidation takes place there whoever has higher oxidation potential he or she will win the race but since everything is decided in terms of reduction potential so the one which has higher oxidation potential will win the race there it means the one which has higher oxidation potential has lower reduction potential so the one which has higher oxidation potential or lower reduction potential will win the game in anode the one which has higher reduction potential will win the game in cathode so in the cathode you have to see the one which has higher srp will get discharged at anode because it's oxidation there the one which will have lower srp mean will get discharged there everyone any clarity required here yeah faisal i'm not giving any more examples here right now because i'll deviate from my metallurgy and go to things other things because there are a lot of things there over potential and all so is it clear at the one which has lower reduction potential will get discharged at anode and the one which has higher reduction potential will get discharged at cathode fine anything yes, else sure anything else also you can always let me know and then i would like to continue so this was general idea about what is hydrometallurgy we have not discussed hydrometallurgy yet just some low reactive metals in aqueous solution they will like can be separated how i'll tell you pyrometallurgy just requires the use of heat and electrolysis is carried out during electrometallurgy more reactive metals of s block and group 1 and 2 or as well as 13th group aluminum also can be extracted using electrometallurgy copper gold hydrometallurgy they ask this that's the reason i'm repeating iron and zinc and lead those heavy metals heavy metals pyrometallurgy copper also pyrometallurgy so crushing and grinding so first using jaw crusher so this big big ores like boulders they have to be crushed into small stone like gravel like size as much as possible it should be crushed i think so why not only gravel we should crush it to find powder finally so it's showing it's like this so it should be like converted into fine powder no the powder will contain a lot of impurities so to remove the basic impurities by different methods is done in the concentration step which concentration method is used for sulfide ores name it oh, unmute and speak sulfide ores concentration concentration is basically removing the basic impurities happens no when the rice comes you can wash and at least a big big stone if you see a big stone you can just hold, do a hand picking and remove it similarly the basic impurities basic means not basic acidic whatever the big big impurities you can see can first be removed from the ore and the process is known as concentration of the ore which method is used to concentrate sulfide ore this can question this type of questions can be asked and that's an easy question name the method uh no roasting is basically converting the ores into their oxides and removing the volatile impurities in form of their oxides concentration of sulfide ore froth flotation students what 
froth flotation heard of it so vulcan uh, 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 froth flotation anyways i'm here now to help you out first let's see some physical methods followed by chemical methods of concentration means basically removing of impurities from the ore gravity separation magnetic separation froth flotation magnetic separation when you have impurity where either the ore or the impurity has magnetic characteristic the ability to get attracted towards a magnet either the ore or the impurity should have the ability to get attracted by magnets froth flotation for sulfide ores we'll discuss levigation of gravity separation based on the difference in densities so you have heavier ore and lighter impurities heard in the low, uh, studied in the lower classes no something something like we knowing the lighter impurities goes off like this we yes. don't do yes like yes. that so here it's little more sophisticated and you have to do it on a large scale so giving you a basic idea here we start so the concentration methods first gravity separation see a flow a not just a normal flow of water very high speed flow of water from here and the ore coming out from here ore coming out from here and a gush of water and this is platform with wedges where the heavier ore will be collected and the lighter impurities gang is impurity will be washed away so this process is mainly used for oxide and carbonate ores and this process is based on the difference in densities between the ore and the impurities so what happened there so we'll just i'm just seeing any animation is there or not which i have missed it no so a stream of water is passed through a platform having wedges where the lighter impurities are washed up by water and the heavier ore is left behind so this process is mainly used for oxide and carbonate ores and it is based on the difference in densities between the ore and the impurities ma'am tell nandana ma'am um, the impurities are generally lighter than the ore only those ores can be considered here in this category where uh, i'll tell you this is a basic process and then uh, there will be one more last step where we will again refine the metals so basically see some dust particles some small sand particles if at all there if at all there we will do this initial process of passing a gush of water just like the pipe you open and you just flow a lot of water and yeah. the lighter impurities are being carried away and the heavier ore is left behind doesn't guarantee that all the impurities have been removed only some of the lighter impurities are removed say for example if i have some rice with a rice husk and big big stones or gravels in it and like this we knowing i do what happens is some lighter impurities can be removed at least i can guarantee some removal of some lighter impurities the heavier ones will be still left behind so it's like a very basic step in the beginning got it yes sir yeah but remember it's used the basis is the difference in the densities between the ore and impurity and mainly used for oxide and carbonate ores here any one either the ore or the impurity will be magnetic in nature so what happens see when the finely ground ore is passed through this magnetic belt my magnetic particles will be attracted for a longer time so all those particles which are attracted by this magnet will be held by this roller for a longer time so when you keep a bucket here you will collect all the magnetic particles and here the non magnetic particles will be forming a separate heap so since the magnetic particles will be attracted by the magnet for a longer duration so it will be attracted here and it will be like collected here in this area separately and non magnetic impurities but the condition is you should have the ore non magnetic and impurities magnetic or ore magnetic non magnetic impurities either ore or the impurity should be magnetic if both are non magnetic you can use this technique either ore or impurity should have magnetic character that is very very important 
see how the magnetic roller ensures there is a separate heap for the magnetic particles a separate one for the non magnetic one froth flotation method it's based on the difference in the wetting ability i'll tell you we'll have two two, two three things i will have water i'll take in a basic one or the details are all here i'll take water plus or plus an oil and then i will ensure that a stream of air is passed like this like this rotating pedal a strong stream of air passes what happens sometimes you will also see you take some water add some powdered detergent rin or whatever suffix a little powder one you put will it form that foam froth no without shaking or without stirring no na yeah, it will not form that sufficient little it may form but you have to move your hand like this like this as seen in the bucket so like not will not in the machines also like this like this you'll just put you can see foam similarly water or an oil plus you'll pass that stream of air which will cause the formation of froth the oil being lighter will float on the top and with this stream of air the oil will form froth so oil forms froth the ore particles are attracted and getting giving you a basic idea the ore particles are attracted to the oil oil is present in the form of froth so we'll pass a stream of air so that the oil forms a froth froth on the top oil less dense than water that froth will attract the ore particles impurities will be more attracted towards water so impurity will stay with the water down or being lighter i'm sorry oil being lighter and when you pass the stream of air it oil forms froth on the top and it will stick uh, and the ore particles stick to the oil i'll repeat once again ore water oil and a stream of air which will cause the oil to form the froth froth on the top or attracted towards it or will stick to the froth and impurities to the water you you will be thinking it's so easy froth will be there bubbles are formed and then we will add some frothing agent for the frothing agent is oil by the way we'll add some froth stabilizers sorry we'll add some froth stabilizers like aniline or crisol they will help the froth to remain as froth for some time at least till what we need it so we need some froth stabilizers so that froth remains there for some time so let's see what is there one more click okay water i said let's see i am missing something or not yes oil pine or eucalyptus oil is being used pine oil okay you add oil water plus oil oil top layer less dense 
students don't forget or is already there so i said or plus oil plus water i am correct and then air compressed air will cause the oil to form a froth on the top a lot of froth stabilizes so that the froth remains there for some time and don't forget that the ore particles stick to the froth and when it can be separately collected what we get in the froth is the ore particles the gang or the impurity will be present in the water got some idea everyone fine yes xanthates as well yes i'll tell you all those things right now but here there's a first my my way out is first give you a general idea once you know then little more details i'll add up and that's the way you will be studying so enlarge view a air bubble of the froth to which the mineral is not the right word ore particles are attached so it's an enlarged view of the bubble where see the froth bubble from the oil due to that gush of air which is passed the air particles i'm sorry the ore particles sticking to the air bubble frothing agent without oil froth will be formed without soap that froth will be formed just like that without that print powder or whatever surf excel powder or tide or whatever you want so frothing agent is oil pine or eucalyptus oil i just now mentioned so that the froth remains stable and doesn't becomes like this these questions are asked in the exam if i am giving some time to certain things that's the reason so we have froth stabilizers to stabilize the froth what are those they are crystals and annelids do you know annelid structure as such in general no or not this is annelid what are crystals ortho meta and para methyl phenols phenols perfect say for example this is ortho crystal right now this will do students it's possible that the ore gets lewd with water are i am sitting in nice swimming pool in the month of march march right smarts yes so and you want me to go to the top in the summer it will be exposed to that heat so some ore jokes apart so that you remember it better so what happens no the ore should become water heating or should hate water and go to the froth so we need sodium ethyl xanthate as a collector what is the meaning of collector to convert the ore into hydrophobic ore to make the ore hydrophobic make the ore water heating so that pakka you go and stick to the froth only not water so that the ore guaranteed goes to the froth and is not remaining in the cool water below in the swimming pool we'll use a collector so that's what that's what ilhina was saying sodium ethyl xanthate correct no so we need a frothing agent a froth stabilizer and a collector so that the ore becomes hydrophobic in nature no if i have both pbs and zns both are sulfide ores so students as i just now mentioned before only that sulfide ores are concentrated by froth flotation method so if one sulfide ore is there blending blend is there or galena is there well and good if both are there both will stick to the froth on the surface and the will be present together no i'll have both pbs and zns together i want to separate them what will i use i will use a depressant this is also asked in exams depressant what is the meaning or the purpose of depressant here is i'll explain students i'll use nacn nacn will be used as a depressant means nacn will selectively react with zns and the following complex 
Na2, Zn Cn4, will be produced. I was just seeing the balancing weight. 4, 4, Zn is done. So did you understand the role of this NaCN or present here? It will selectively react with ZNS. Now ZNS is converted into a soluble complex and can be recovered later. How you don't have to worry. So ZNS is removed. So what we get in the froth is only PBS. This is the meaning of selective froth, froth flotation process. Did you people follow? Is it okay? Yes. Okay. Remember this complex. What's the, in case you have studied little coordination chemistry, some, some set of people, can you help me with the, uh, the hybridization of zinc here? And its geometry, anything? CN minus is a strong field ligand. Is it a square planar complex? I'll not spend much time here. I have to complete my clergy. So just asking you these things so that in case the people who have studied can revise these. The ones who have not studied wait till I discuss coordination chemistry. So whether the geometry is tetrahedral or square planar. That's what I will not comment because I'm so sorry. I suddenly realized that this chapter has to be done by me first and then then only I'll speak something related to that. So till then I'll continue metallurgy. So please find out whether it's there are two options tetrahedral or square planar sp3 or dsp2. What is the nature of CN? With the position of zinc, does it have a role to play? What is the spectrochemical series of the ligand students? I'm giving hints to only those people who have attended the chapter. Others, please, I will not discuss anything. I promise I'll continue. Okay, students, you can find this out. The ones who have studied. Clear, good revision for you. Others, I'm there. I'll teach. Ha, like, I'll, I will discuss. Let's come back to the point first. Okay, I'm getting some correct answers in the chats, but as I told, I ensure that whenever I discuss something, I'll teach it first and then discuss. But at the same time, those who are preparing to know the level of your preparation so that a random question suddenly asked from your need syllabus, whether you're able to get a correct answer for it or not, let me know the geometry of this in the next class after the lunch break, find it out. Yes, students make it fast now. Which of the following? Or is best concentrated by froth flotation method. It should be a sulfide ore. Done. Okay. Yes. Very quickly. Make it pass because it's a long journey. And I don't want to skip anything. Next one, very fast. If I get one or two correct answers, also I'll tell and discuss it. Okay.
yeah thank you so much again uh students i am ah now i'm convinced i know so ritika's answer yes yes students the ore is not easily wetted by water ore is more attracted by the oil and not by the water if it is little bit attracted also by chance we'll use a collector so that we'll make the ore hydrophobic by but by default also it will be more wetted by the oil not by the water so here we go for the d option some may saying see you have any confusion you can ask me but i will go for d here though i am getting a mixture of c as well as d from different person yes impurities are soluble in water containing additives like pine oil pine oil is the frothing agent in case you uh, listening to this part and not seeing this uh, the most convincing and you get only single correct ones right is d everyone clear can we continue let me know whenever you have something to ask yes this will help you out you don't have to study much later tell me <coughs> tell me of course of course leaching so these were physical methods gravity separation uh, then magnetic separation and froth flotation leaching take bauxite ore add any oh one one of the instances aluminum is an amphoteric metal its oxide is also amphoteric it will react with any oh the ore will react with any oh with the chemical which you are adding the impurities will be left behind so you are using certain chemical which will either react with the ore or the impurity it will react with one of them the other will be left behind you have to just filter and separate out yes so it's based on the difference in solubility of the ores and the impurity in a suitable reagent either the ore or impurity not both both should not react with any of which the impurity as well as the ore nh is just an example i want to give so we'll discuss about leaching here so we'll right now leach bauxite why it's very important from the examination view point so the principal ore of aluminum is bauxite al2o3.2h2o these are the major impurities fe2o3 silica titan titanium so titanium oxide so we'll first go by the beers process where our purpose is to remove fe2o3 which is a basic impurity due to the presence of fe2o3 as an impurity the bauxite looks red in color impure bauxite when the major impurity is fe2o3 the bauxite will be called as red bauxite and you have to remove this fe2o3 from this bauxite what will you do you will take concentrated neoh and you will add as a result of which there's one good thing one bad thing also the ore is getting dissolved and forming a complex there's a temperature and pressure condition but only it helps us to remove fe2o3 sio2 is also reacting with any oh and forming sodium silicate which is water soluble so i get two water soluble components one of the impurity also dissolve in any oh so here the basic purpose is Fe2O3 and TiO2, which will not react with any OH, will be left behind. Filter it, remove the residue. Job over. But SiO2 is there to trouble you. Remember that in Beer's process. Did you people follow what happens in the Beer's process? Any OH is added, which reacts with both O and SiO2 impurity. TiO2 and Fe2O3 can be successfully removed by this method. the next one is hall's process where the main purpose is to remove the basic impurity fe2o3 and what do we do here we take sodium carbonate here we fuse the ore with sodium carbonate of course impure ore only after the concentration also only the big big impurities the shallow shallow work we do no upar se little here and little there is removed the other important impurities are sitting there 
and that's what we are doing step by step in all the different processes so though gravity separation is used for oxide and carbonate ores and removes some of the lighter gang or impurities we have to either treat it with some other effective reagent which we call as a chemical process of leaching i'll take any two co3 solid i'll take the ore i'll fuse it and then add water aluminum is converted into NaAlOH a soluble complex pass co2 you get the advantages you get back na2co3 which can be reused and aluminum is obtained in the form of white precipitate of aluminum hydroxide gelatinous white precipitate you must have done also in the lab heat it strongly to get alumina the pure one back what did i say fuse the ore with na2co3 then add water pass co2 you get in you get back na2co3 and along with that you get a gelatinous white precipitate of aluminum hydroxide which on strong heating gives you back the pure alumina filter when you carry out the soluble complex step no you filter the solid impurities like fe2o3 will be there in the residue and can be removed after you filter here after the soluble complex is formed if fe2o3 will be there as residue filter it then take the filtrate and pass co2 then you get a gelatinous white precipitate and then heat it to get the pure alumina so don't forget filtration here in this step what happens in the fused process fused means melting see bayer has used naoh all says i will use na2co3 powder take powdered na2co3 and powdered ore along with impurities which are by default there so you'll take powdered ore with impure one plus powdered na2co3 solid you will heat it when you heat it no it melts melts ionic compounds can conduct electricity either in aqueous solution or in fused state in the molten state then when you heat it it melts and they chemically react when you add water it forms a soluble complex then you filter and remove fe2o3 then you pass co2 you get back na2co3 when you pass co2 the soluble complex the aluminum in it has been converted into gelatinous white aluminum hydroxide now when you heat it strongly al2o3 is obtained the pure one getting my point everyone little you have to read and practice okay halls process over beers both are not doing anything about sio2 serpex is i will do wait my job is to remove sio2 the impurity here so if red bauxite means fe2o3 is the main impurity red bauxite is purified using halls process and bayer's process exam wise bayer's is little more important bayer's and halls remove red bauxite i mean fe2o3 has the major impurity serpex process removes sio2 what we do you know we take the impure ore take coke and in a stream of nitrogen we supply very high temperature so the impure ore could be mixed with coke atmosphere of nitrogen heat it very strongly the silicon here gets reduced coke or carbon is a reducing agent sio2 is reduced to si volatile impurity gone otherwise we will remove by filtration but silicon vapors will be formed at that high temperature gone everyone when we add a reducing agent in the stream of nitrogen and very strong heat aluminum nitride will be formed sio2 will be reduced by coke as a reducing agent into si aluminum nitride when hydrolysis hydrolyzed sorry liberates ammonia gas and aluminum hydroxide gelatinous white precipitate when the gelatinous white precipitate is heated i'll get pure al2o3 so white bauxite contains sio2 as the major impurity which can be removed by serpex process tell me a very simple thing 
when mg3n2 is hydrolyzed what do we get balancing not required what do we get students very good the hydroxide of magnesium and ammonia gas perfect very good you can call this as hydro metallurgy you will take gold or silver cyanide i'll recollect all these we are only after leaching i'll re revise once huh? i'll tell you once so i'll take silver cyanide solution silver cyanide they've written separately don't worry about that it's basically agcn solution agcn solution o2 is a must the reaction should be carried out in the presence of air or oxygen otherwise what will happen without o2 the reaction is reversible you get back the reactants you don't want that right so o2 is used as an oxidizing agent and agcn solution in the presence of o2 as an oxidizing agent without which without which the reaction will be reversible don't try that produces a complex a complex is formed so silver goes inside the complex a silver is a part of the complex now now from this complex you have to take out silver because you need silver right what will you do you will use zinc just now you saw zinc forms very stable zn cn4 to minus and your lunch break work or tomorrow They're very unfair the teacher is asking you one question to find out in the lunch break zinc hybridization and geometry i have asked no and nature of cn some people told it's a strong or a weak field but still others you'll find out everything about this so at least we got to know that zinc forms a very stable complex with the cyanide ion so if i introduce zinc here zinc will go inside the coordination sphere and form a complex and silver will be relieved once again agcn solution will take o2 is oxidizing agent and silver goes inside the coordination sphere or, or forms a complex it's a soluble complex but i want silver i don't want silver to be a part of the complex i want silver i want to extract silver and gold exactly the same way just replace ag with au the same the logic so what we'll do is we know zinc you can form a very good bonding with cn minus you come inside i will go out have a look zinc and i use zinc zinc forms this particular complex which is very stable and silver precipitates out and we get silver and now we have to refine silver or purify it that's a different thing so we'll take similarly gold or silver cyanide solution along with oxygen as the oxidizing agent will convert silver or gold into a complex this is the formula of the complex agcu i'm sorry agcn whole twice minus to take them out of the complex now why was this complexation done so that the impurities are left behind so before you add zinc don't forget that silver is inside the coordination sphere it is a soluble complex but the impurities impurities are left behind and they have to be filtered impurities are left behind and they have to be filtered and removed the element is a part of the coordination sphere it's a part of the complex when you using zinc it replaces it and we get silver same logic for gold hydrometallurgy next we take ag2s and nacn and oxidizing agent o2 same whether i take agcn or ag2s silver goes inside and forms a part of the complex again use zinc zinc will now replace silver and silver can be precipitated <laughs> as i mentioned you don't want to use oxygen don't dare do that because in the absence of oxygen the reaction becomes reversible don't forget your homework ha huh? either today second session or tomorrow also fine 
leaching. Okay, before these examples, concentration means enrichment of the ore or removing as many impurities as possible from the ore. Physical methods, gravity separation, based on the difference in densities between the ore particles and the gang or matrix. Allow the powdered ore to pass through a wedged platform and pass a stream of water, high speed. The lighter particles of the gang will be removed and the heavier ore will be left behind. Oxide and carbonate ores are mainly concentrated by this method. Next. Next we have is the magnetic separation where either the ore or the impurity should have a magnetic character. So that when we pass this powdered ore through magnetic roller, magnetic impurities or ore depends, forms a separate heat from the non-magnetic particles. Remember those two buckets. Remember the examples also. SNO2, when you want to extract in from cassiterite, wolframite, which is a magnetic substance, is the impurity and you can use it. Or if you want to extract, uh, like remove some non-magnetic impurities from iron ore, then also you can use that. Froth flotation involves the use of frothing agent, froth stabilizer and collector so that the ore particles will stick to the froth on the surface and will be removed. And the ga gang particles which are preferentially wetted by water will stay behind. Sulfide ores are mainly concentrated by this method. Chemical methods include leaching. Leaching, aluminium, bauxite, Bayer's process, use NaOH. TiO2 and Fe2O3 will not react with NaOH. They'll be left as residue filter and remove. SiO2, the impurity which will interfere and sodium silicate is formed. Fe2O3 and TiO2 removed, but sodium silicate will be formed because SiO2 reacts with NaOH. The ore also reacts with NaOH and forms a soluble complex from which you can obtain the ore again. Hall's processes use Na2CO3, Serpex use coke in an atmosphere of nitrogen and strong heating. Then comes the hydrometallurgical process where the silver and gold cyanides in aqueous medium with oxygen as oxidizing agent first forms a complex. Then when you use zinc, those elements can be precipitated. You can use Ag2S and also perform the leaching process. Answer these quickly. Very easy. Gives you some confidence in case you have not learned. Make it fast. Which option? I still didn't get any answer. A, B, C, D, one word, one letter you have to type or unmute and say. Absolutely. Just now we saw. Tell me. Very easy again. <coughs> Extremely easy. Oxygen we saw just now. Now, students, once you get the concentrated ore, when you heat it very strongly in a limited supply of oxygen or sometimes without oxygen, it's a calcination process to remove the volatile impurities. If you are heating it strongly in the presence of air or oxygen, this is mainly meant for sulfide ores, where the sulfide ore is converted into its oxide, plus all the volatile organic and inorganic impurities are removed. This is meant for the oxide and the carbonate ores. Carbonate ores can lose CO2 and become oxide. Hydrated oxides can lose their water of crystallization and other impurities they can lose. So very quickly, the Ore is being heated in the limited supply of air or oxygen 
don't forget below the melting point of the ore because if you if the temperature is at or above the melting point it will melt so keeping the temperature below the melting point if you heat the ore in limited supply of oxygen mainly for non sulfide ores co2 see here co2 is lost you get the oxide co2 is lost here water is lost along with that so you can lose co2 and h2o when you heat it we can remove moisture ore becomes porous porous means greater surface area greater reactivity moisture is removed impurities are removed in the form of their elemental vapors some volatile compounds are also removed tell me which is the correct calcination process i know i'm a little bit fast but what to do don't worry i'll ensure i'll cover everything students which one a b c or d calcination is for oxide and carbonate ores this is a carbonate ore very good very good i got the answer very good priyanshal very good kartik and you know more names kartik yesterday also i noticed yes good many more people are interacting i am seeing everything very good maybe i am not naming everyone very good roasting the sulfide ores when heated in the presence or in excess supply of air or oxygen forget the minor reaction the sulfide ores are converted into the respective oxides and so2 is liberated please make a note of the point that hds ag2s these are thermally less stable so they directly see once what happens i'll tell you wait wait see zns is there zinc blend pbs you take similarly you get zno and so2 the zno which you get no will have high lattice energy will remain as zno but you try this with hgs or ag2s thermally less stable will give you hg and half o2 so your only one job is left directly see the step is first we should get metal oxide and then there is one more step either carbon reduction or electrolytic reduction where we convert the oxide into its metal but for these metals no tension they are thermally less stable so in this step only you don't have to perform another step <laughs> in this step only you get the respective metal and oxygen consider this minor reactions in organic chemistry is also we are neglecting no yes volatile and non volatile impurities are removed moisture is removed remember these two that will directly give the respective metals impure one because these oxides are highly unstable so what's the purpose of calcination basically from the concentrated ore so that we get the metal oxide free of moisture impurities volatile oxides non metallic impurities organic impurities all the impurities will be oxidized co2 will be liberated water of crystallization will be lost just the anhydrous oxide the same purpose is of roasting also but calcination the limited supply of air or oxygen roasting in the presence of excess of air or oxygen roasting for sulfide ores calcination for non sulfide ores tell me mm 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 okay whichever this is roasting this is not calcination for sulfide ores it is es so crushing grinding we saw concentration we saw we also saw conversion into its oxide by roasting or calcination now we have to see except for cases like mercury and silver etc in other cases the metal oxide has to be converted into metal impure i understand this reduction process we have to look into 
Yes, these many processes we will look into for conversion of metal oxide into metal. Carbon reduction. We'll use coke or carbon. And this one I, I'll go in details mainly for Fe. The oxide will be there, carbon will be the reducing agent. You will heat it, you'll get the metal along with CO. Carbon is a reducing agent, it gets oxidized to CO. Reduction takes place at very high temperature. The metal obtained is in the molten state. I was telling now Fe, Fe, Sn, Pb, Zn. Mainly, this is pyrometallurgy which is employed for these metals. Very important, students. If you have stayed this long, stay for the next five minutes also. Blast furnace. Why waste these five minutes? Let's start. Blast furnace. What happens here is this, wait. I'll explain you through a lingam diagram, maybe in the next classes. Right now, let me tell you something. In blast furnace, students, below, iron is my concern, below, why I'll explain, 710 degrees centigrade. CO is used as a reducing agent. Kindly wait till I discuss Ellingham diagram. Above this temperature, coke or carbon? Coke is Whenever it comes in my sequence, I'll not jump anything. I'll not skip anything. So, students, any, did you know this? Heard of Ellingham diagram? Heard of the fact that below 710, it's CO which is used as a reducing agent. Reason I'll tell you. Above this temperature, it is C or Coke, which is the reducing agent. This thing has to be noted till we discuss the, okay, till we discuss the, Ellingham diagram. Yes, only this slide. And after lunch break, we will continue again then. Now, students, what happens is feed means you will have Fe2O3, the hematite ore, coke, limestone. I repeat, limestone, coke, Fe2O3 is what we call as raw materials. Now, where is that pick? Yes. Start with this hottest zone. Zone of combustion. Yes. The char we call it like charge being feeded. Feed, charge. Hematite, cook, limestone. Fine. Now, in this zone of combustion, what happens? The temperature is quite high. The coke burns, hot air is blown. Don't forget, otherwise you'll coke to your supplying, ma'am. Where, where, where are you getting O2? Hot, hot air is supplied, hot air. So, the high temperature is required and air, oxygen. It produces CO2. Lot of air, CO2. This CO2 combines with all carbon, doesn't undergo complete combustion. Some coke is there. You're supplying a lot of coke. Combines with the carbon to form CO. So, in case you are wondering, why CO and CO2 is given. The first step is coke is provided by us, hot air from this end and they will combine and go for complete combustion, CO2. Which reacts now you'll be thinking C is consumed no, or not all C is consumed. A part of the C is ca carrying out this reaction. Some C combines with the CO2 which is produced to form CO. Students, these are gases. And yes, not to forget the reaction is highly exothermic. Supplies most of the heat which is required during the process. The hottest zone also, zone of combustion. So in zone of combustion, C plus O2, CO2, CO2, not all CO2, CO2 is there. Some CO2 combines with the left out coke and forms CO. 
very high temperature is produced some temperature is required to bring about the reaction but it's in the reaction is highly exothermic a lot of heat is given out which is sufficient to carry out most of the reactions here now zone of combustion now next what will happen zone of combustion you people followed yes two more minutes since we are discussing and then don't worry so students what happens is zone of combustion and i told below 710 co above 710 coke or carbon now what happens is the upper part so after this i am directly coming here why as i told these are light gases they can come up co and co2 gases no they can aram se go no problem now what happens is fe2o3 is here students fe2o3 when it reacts with co i told you lingham i'll discuss don't worry if not today by tomorrow we will definitely discuss before the completion of this chapter so co is a reducing agent when the temperature is below 710 degree centigrade so what will happen is co will itself get oxidized to co2 and it will reduce fe into fe2o3 will be reduced to feo and some fe2o3 remains unreacted i repeat in this reaction co is used as a reducing agent it will reduce fe2o3 from plus 3 to the plus 2 state first so some fe2o3 remains unreacted and some fe2o3 is converted from the plus 3 to the plus 2 state this together is fe3o4 it contains both fe in plus 3 and plus 2 state plus 3 state which has not reacted plus 2 state which has reacted and now new produced mixed oxide this will further react with co and now all the plus 3 should be converted into plus 2 so students some fe 2o3 is remain unreacted and some of it is reacting and producing feo so some feo is produced and some fe2o3 is left behind they will combine and produce fe3o4 which will react with co and no more fe3 plus now we'll convert everything into fe2 plus which will again react with co to produce fe understood here till here then we'll all go for lunch so till here if you have a doubt you can ask two minutes if you want to wait and ask otherwise after the lunch you'll ask everyone followed first coke reacts with the hot air which is blown co2 is produced co2 reacts with some of the coke or unburnt carbon which has not reacted and produce co so both are there both will rise at or below 710 degree centigrade co is a stronger reducing agent we will learn that why give me some time for that so co reacts with fe2o3 feo is produced along with some unburnt fe2o3 they form a mixed oxide fe3o4 now remaining fe2o3 has to be converted into feo and that's done in the next step now feo which is now there will be further reduced to fe in this upper part or low low temperature zone comparatively the least temperature zone zone of reduction so your reduction takes place feo is converted into fe this is zone of combustion remaining we'll see after lunch anything there ask or after lunch yes tell me otherwise i'll disconnect the meeting we'll meet after lunch then is fine done okay fine bye then again let's meet at after lunch yes 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 i even i am very hungry done bye